Okay, now we're good. Okay, now, now we're, we're good? Yeah, we're good. We're live. We're live? Are yes. you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not joking with me. It's not April 1st, right? No, it's, I missed that. Okay. No more water buckets. Right. No more water buckets. Oh, Lord. That's a story for another time. Okay, so now we're on take three. Sorry. Um, I did mention we have a trainee, right? Um, <laughs> please, I have it. Okay, so we think we're on. <laughs> Please make some comments. I know Stephanie, I know Pat was there, Lynn Cooper was there. So make some comments and just say, tell me that I'm live and I will kind of start at the beginning. So uh, what I was talking about is that I had a very good friend who had a bead store for about 30 years and she was very close to where our store was located. So artistic artifacts really just maintain beads in our bead mixes, which is how I bead. And she has since retired. We have inherited some beads and so we have May as bead month. And the goal is to add many, many beads to our inventory. And as well as over the next couple of Facebook Lives, we're gonna to talk to you about how I use beads. Um, and maybe I know that there was lots of comments and there might be some people who have some specific questions. Uh, I remember one going, I don't know where to start. I have another one. I put beads on something they fell off. So I'll try to answer some of those questions as well as talk about my favorite beading book. This book is Beading on Fabric, because of course that's what I do, is bead on fabric. And this is written by Liz Kettle, you know, my partner in crime, one of my many partners in crime. And I think this, if you want to learn about beading on fabric, this is the place to start. This is a must have. It's definitely worth it. It's going to walk you through the steps. And the other thing was many books that have to do with hand stitching and beading always showed you diagrams. So you really couldn't, this is showing you hands. So you're actually seeing where your hands are, how they interact with the beading. So what Liz has done, and Ruth Chandler has done it in her book as well with modern hand stitching, there's three books that are based on creating a sample book. I just think that is flipping brilliant. So here's, so you can make a sample quilt or you can make a sample book. So I, I think it's brilliant. A lot of times when everybody says, oh, try it out, make a sample, you're like, huh, why? It's not going to be worth anything. There isn't going to be special. And this allows you to use your books as a reference. Um, it, you know, was a reminder. Um, we can pet beads just like we pet fabric, so it's all good. So I'm going to show you, based on Liz's book, what we're going to do. So she has great instructions about making the pages for the book. Okay, and you'll, you'll need to buy the book to get the instructions, but basically you have a front. Sorry, I'll turn it around in a minute. Okay, so you're making a piece like this and you're giving some instructions and you're gonna end up having pages. So this will be a page, that'll be a page, and, and that's what'll create the book. And she's very detailed in it. So then what happens, on page 21, if you guys have your books in front of you, is that um, she's got different techniques on different pages. So, that's where we're gonna start, is how I prep things for beading. Okay, so I showed you this piece. Now, I don't ever bead just on fabric. Even when I work on beaded panels, I always add something that's going to stabilize it some because it just, you can see the knots and things behind this. But if I fuse my batting to my page, all my knots are going to be here. So they're not going to pull forward and pull through the front fabric. And I do use Misty Fuse. So Misty Fuse is our fusible of choice and it is very lightweight. It's environmentally safe for the environment to produce it. A lot of the things that are created with paper are not so friendly to the environment. So I would take a piece 
I can cut it and put it on the fabric. It's white, it's very sheer. Take that out. And then I have my goddess sheet, which, you know, if you don't have 10 of these in your studio, you better start buying more because I use them for everything. So these are goddess sheets. So I would put it here like this, this, and then I'm going to iron it. So it's going to fuse to the fabric first. Then I'm going to take that piece and I'm going to fuse it to this. So I'm fusing my top fabric to my batting. I use batting. I use flannel. Uh, many different things. I can fuse the batting to my backing if I want. A lot of times I try to do things to help make my fabrics not shift because I need all the help I can get. And um, so the fusibles really work and it doesn't interfere with the hand of the fabric. Misty Fuse is very, very lightweight. I can stitch through it very easily. So Misty Fuse, I use quite a bit. So that's how I make my base. And you can see in the book the directions for specific measurements and everything that are there. All right, so of course I went one step further. <laughs> so what I did then, I'm gonna move this out of the way, is I took some pictures from um, my trip to Italy because I have this thing about doors and I printed them on organza. Then I misty fused the organza and I attached it to my top page of my book. So here's what my pictures looked like. They are all different kinds of um, doorways. And then this is what it looks like with organza. So like you can see here to here type of thing. So that gave me a little background, but the other thing it gave me was a pattern to follow for my stitching. Okay, yes. I, I always like patterns that give me some direction so that I'm not starting with a blank page. Blank pages are a little intimidating. This allows me to add some to my page. So that is my secret is out. So that's our prepping. I do this, as I said, with the petite panels. Any of my beading all has multi-layers. All right, now let's talk about materials. I like silamide to stitch with. I like tulip needles to stitch with. So they are my favorites. Now, can I get them all the time? No. Silamide is really hard to find right now. So there's a product that's called Nymo. It comes on little spools. And it's a, it is a beading thread. So, um, and we, so we have this silamide on cards and we have, um, we will be getting some spools. We have all of the tulip needles. Now beading needles come short, they come long. Um, I, again, if I had to pick a number, my favorite beading needle is a 10 short. Doesn't mean that I don't use whatever needle is threaded. I definitely do that. So those are tools. Anybody have any questions so far? Chris would like to know if you can use tap. Tap. Um, yes, you can. I think tap is going to be a little bit of a harder one to get your needle through to, to stitch on it, but for sure you can. I would just do, stitch um, with a little bit larger needle. So, okay, now you're going to ask me about needle sizes. Needle sizes, the higher the number, the smaller the needle. The um, lower the number, the smaller the bead. I had to write that down because of course, everything is inconsistent over this whole industry about needles and thread. So 10 is kind of middle of the line, 12, 13 is gonna be a really small um, beading needle. Um, oh, did I say that wrong? Size 11 beads are smaller, okay. Sorry, see, I wrote it down, I still got it wrong. Um, I'll show you some beads in a minute, That'll, then we'll be, do it. But these are definitely the needles. Any other questions so far? Everybody with me? <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, 
I also, when we're talking about needles, this is another book I recommend, Know Your Needles, again by Liz Kettle. Machine needles, hand needles, beading needles, everybody needs to have it because they do make needles for a reason and it's, this tells you why. So um, it's really helpful. Materials that, all right, now let me show you a little bit about beads. Now I will tell you that the only reason why these beads are still in this container is because somebody gave them to me that way. <laughs> because I always work with bead mixes. And this is what we sell, and this is why we sell those, is because that's what I personally work with. So I have those little hardware drawers, and I have a color, I have turquoise, I have red, I have white, I have small beads, I have big beads, and each, be each one of these has a drawer to its own self. And so the first thing I do when I get beads like this is I pull the blue bead out, blue drawer out and go dump it. But I won't do that to you right now. Okay, so this, um, where's my teeth? So this is a bead that is what they call a number six compared to a number eight. So the reason why you want to know that is where it's going to fall at, on your piece, All right? And I think these, this is maybe an 11, this little tiny brown one here. Sorry, hands in the way. So this is an 11, I think, because again, I throw the tubes away and use them as mixes. So that's just to give you an idea about the different sizes. And that makes it a little bit easier to order them and use them. But I, as I said, I don't operate this way. A lot of beaters who do peyote and do some of the bead weaving and that type of stuff really need to be using the same size bead so they're gonna keep theirs like this. As, an, as a bead embroiderer, I don't. Now we're going to talk about beads and applying them to fabric. Um, yeah, okay. I thought I put my heart on upside down, but that's all right. So to save you a little time, I pre-threaded my needles today <laughs> rather than trying to thread them live. And I will tell you I have a new tool that allows me to thread my needles much easier. And we've just added it to the website as a pre-order. So this is this little compact battery operated light and magnifier. So it is pretty cool. I can actually see the hole in the needle and the hole on the beads. So I am now addicted to this lamp. It goes everywhere with me. I would say um, it's probably more, it's, it's, I don't use needle threaders, so I'm good with this one. But this is definitely just added last night to inventory, to ordering possibilities. Someone would like to know what that silver scoop was. Okay, we're going to work on sourcing those. This is something that's very common to the beading industry. And it is a little triangular scoop so that you can scoop them up. So we'll be adding different tools that I think will help you in your um, ability to keep your beads under control. <laughs> um, I have a new wood floor in my studio and I've been sorting beads for probably the last three weeks. and. I can hear them as they fall because I can't, they roll off the table. So, um, and I have found this, I have these little boxes and things, but isn't that perfect? I was like, Whoa. I bought this because I thought, oh, I could do this in fabric, but it's perfect for my little triangular.
things. All right, <clears throat> so I just, I did, I, I know there's some special knot, like a quilter's knot or something, but pretty much I just do an overhand knot. So I just get a knot on there. I mean, it's nothing fancy. And then I'm gonna come up and what we're doing is attaching a single bead to a piece. And this door had all these nail heads on it and I thought it would be pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you, see there's the back. I have strings there. I think one of the tricks with beading is, see, whoops, maybe I need a bigger knot than that. So, um, is to make sure that you knot. So here I'm starting my thread. I'm gonna go back down. You can see there, and now I'm gonna put my bead on. So I have a knot in my thread and I've stitched a knot, so to speak. And here's my one bead and I'm gonna put it not in the same hole. Can you see I'm going right next to it? I'm coming up. And you can double your thread if you want. Um, that's always a good thing. Now I've done a couple of these. Then I'm gonna come back over here because I've stitched some and I'm just gonna create a little knot. So I'm gonna, so that's another trick to making sure that your beads are not gonna fall off is to not, you know, some people say 20 beads, somebody says five beads. I just do it every once in a while. Um, Larkin Van Horn was one of the early beaters and first authors of beading. And she would, when she would lecture, she would tell this story about beading her wedding dress, which of course, those of us who knew Larkin, that would be expected. So she beaded with sewing thread. She didn't knot and she didn't double her thread. So, what do you think happened to her beads on her dress? They came off. So, she would tell that story, so hopefully to save other people. All right. So, that is stitching a single bead on. And if, again, I'm just, I, I don't do fancy knots. I just do knots here. Now, what I will show you is, okay, I want to end my thread. So I kind of bury, I do a stitch. You can see these are really planned out. I just wanna make sure that they're not coming through on the top. And I bury it. Okay, any questions? Everybody good so far? Okay, there's a lot you can do with just sewing one bead on. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways on how I've done that. All right, so here's a piece that has um, a single bead. Uh, yes. Some Christina would like to know about the uh, trimming, or the, or the edging. Okay, we'll, we'll get there, Christina. I know, it's pretty cool, isn't it? So these are single beads. Now what I did on this one is here's a single bead and I had a tab on it. So, um, meaning it, can, it, it has an extra bead. So it's two beads instead of one. So what I would do with that one is Let me just show you so and I do this a lot with sequins I sew all my sequins on so I would come up with my bead so I have my bead there now if I want to 
put a little loop on it. All right, so I have another bead. This is where it's really important to not go back in the same hole. Can you see how I did that? Can you do it one more time, but slower? I'll try. Gotcha. All right, so I come up. I have my base bead, my single bead. All right, and then I have a little, I, ha I usually go smaller on the top. All right. So see, here's this one. I've, I've come through here, but I'm, now I'm gonna skip that brown bead and I'm gonna go back in the gold bead and I'm not going in the same hole. Okay? These I tend to knot a little bit more. And again, you know, my fancy knots here. All right, I'm just gonna leave that in there. Okay. So the other way I use them as I do a lot with vintage and so I and I have the pearls kind of go with vintage but what this also does is not only does it add a little bit of flash but it allows me to stitch down my my trims and linens and things so it doesn't flop. So um, here's another one you know these fake pearls their, their beads as far as I'm concerned. So what this was, was an effort to keep this piece up. Here's this. These beads are all in here. So I machine quilted this piece and then I beaded after it. So you don't need a lot of beads. You can just use a little few beads and that's okay. And then look at this. I did the edging. So I did a pillowcase for those of you who know the quilting and then I beaded the edge of that one. Okay. All right. So this one, there's a couple things with this one. So Christina asked about the edging. So the edging is a Pico stitch and there's two large stitches and a small one here. Okay, but if you look at this red, this is a Pico stitch also. Can you see how that works? And so I'm gonna show you on here first. All right. Um, Control my beads a little bit. These are really fun, guys. They are vintage corn cob holders. And they are um, great for beads. So the first one, get a longer thread. Yes, all this thread comes in many different colors, but as you can see, I'm not really worried about that too much. Because once you get the beads on, people just don't, you don't see that. So, Pico, let's see if I can. So it comes up here. Hang on, we'll get started in there a minute. All right, let's see if I can do this. Becky would like to know what kind of, oh, awesome. All right, so. I'm gonna do one bead here. So we have that. I'm gonna put, this is when I need my light to figure out my, where the hole is in my bead. Cause these holes are hard to see. Or maybe they're not there. Oh, there it is, okay. And then have another bead. So there's really three beads in this stitch. Sorry, my thread's in the way. All right, so there's the base bead here, and this is gonna be my other base bead. Now I'm gonna come down next to the bead here, and that's gonna make that 
ch chipped piece pop. All right, so let's try it over here. Let's try it on a smaller one. So here, here, here. So I have, oh. So once I get it started, I only need the middle bead and the base bead. Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you there. So, oops, never mind, I wasn't started. Okay. We'll get it. It's easier when it's on the edge, I have to tell you. Okay, we'll start the line here. Here. Three beads. Base bead is here. This is going to be our top bead. I'm going to come down here. See how it pops? Now, to create a line, I'm coming up onto that base bead and I'm adding a pop bead and another base bead. Coming up here. So what it is, is the two base beads are not leaving room for that third bead and it's popping it. Now see, this has got an extra bead in it. I went and put an extra bead in there. Okay, so, all right, so what? So here, so I'm gonna do my pop bead and my base bead. Okay. Hello, where's my hole? All right. So Liz gives you directions for this Pico stitch, and she does allow, tell you how to do it as a um, edge stitch as well. But that's what the whole idea behind it is, that there's three beads, one in the middle that doesn't have any room to lay flat, so it forces you to pop it. Okay? So these can see a little bit. And when you look at the edge, you can see here's my base bead, here's my pop bead. And it comes down. And once you get going on a row, you don't, um, it just goes um, quickly. Now I would, I'm going to pull this, come here. If not, Now the next stitch and the last one for today is going to be couching. So couching what is done here with these turquoise beads. And now you really can see my bead mixes that I work with there. And I have all kinds of different little beads there. So Gonna come up, go back down. Sorry, moving. Kyle can't find the piece. All right, so I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna go to my bead mix and I'm going to put some beads on there. All right, I don't use. Um, bugle beads very much, but they are cut glass. So whenever you're stitching down a bugle bead, you must put a bead in on the either side of it. Because if you don't, your thread will cut. Um, the bead will cut it. Right. Okay, just kind of get a mixture in here. 
So I have this line of beads. They're not all flat. Some of them have some texture. They're not all the same size. That's just kind of how I like it. And I'm going to say that's as long as I want my beading here. Okay, so I don't want to pull it up tight because I still have to go back and couch them. So couching means I am going to come Where's my thread? I'm going to come back through here and come up and hold that bead in place. So that thread is going to take up space on the row. So you want to get you don't want to pull it tight. You want to give yourself some space. And this is um, Gwen. When she did her Facebook Live, she uses couching quite a bit. And um, it's a little more organic. Okay. So couching, that's couching. And those are the stitches that we're going to go over today. And then what will happen is in the following Facebook Lives, we'll go over other stitches from the beading book. And you'll see how I finish my book. Or I'll get my pages done anyway. I don't know if I'll get it assembled. But that is um, how we're going to do it. Now, we have some, in, in the newsletter we have had um, this last Wednesday, we have some new bead mixes. So we, as I said, the reason why we sell them this way is that's how I use them. So we added, I, I think almost six new colors, four to six new colors that are on there. And so those are available now. The light, get your pre-orders in on that first. And um, then the rest of the beading is in stock and uh, the needles, the beads, the silamide. We have lots of books that have to do with hand stitching, but also cover beading. And um, these are available for you too. One of the things about Christian Brown that I thought was very interesting was that it's, if you're a crazy quilter and you wanna add beads, which I know I saw some comments about people wanting to start crazy quilting, I would get some Christian Brown books. Um, they are really great. The other thing that we have are her stencils. So these are primarily sold for hand stitching, but you can use them for beading too. You can take these patterns and I'll show you what I did with that on another Facebook Live. But those are tools that I think will help you. I'm not a um, thimble person. I, I can put, thimbles on four out of five fingers and I'll go for the fifth one that doesn't have the thimble on it and still stick the needle through my finger. I don't know. I just don't use them. Um, I know that we have, I received a, a um, information about the winner for our giveaway. And of course I can't remember. Chris, are you there? Can you type her name in the chat as the winner? Um, if not, we will do that. I'm sorry, but we do have a winner. The book, the beading thread, um, and some beads will get you that. And I'm sorry, I, I'm, she told me this morning, and of course my camera, my phone is now the camera, so we'll post that as soon as we get it. Um, any questions so far? Anything I can help? Did we get some questions answered for some new beaders that had some concerns about starting the beating or troubleshooting what you were doing. Is that, that's all good? Lots of okay. parts and lights. Okay, cool. Because we've got interest in a beating class, so. Okay, awesome. If somebody said, ask about my necklace? Yes, many people love your necklace. Okay. So, um, Dina has won the live. Dina, Dina has won the live. Thank you, Sharon. Um, so yes, congratulations, Dina. The, um, I do actually also have some quilts behind me, but let me tell you, um, my first life I was a weaver and a spinner and a dyer. 
And I wanted to transition out of that, and I was currently selling my fiber art in a co-op gallery down in Alexandria, Virginia. So it had to have fiber in it, it had to be forced to sell it, and it had to go through two jurors to get into the boutique. So I developed a whole line of fabric jewelry using bold fabric beads and stitching. And um, I'll show you some of that this month too and, and how I did that. So that's coming. But um, I'm very proud to say that this necklace, um, cre I also created a bracelet. And the bracelet was featured in Washington, Washington Post Magazine, um, Mother's Day's Gifts. So somebody had gone into the torpedo factory and picked my piece out. And yes, I have that hanging in my office, as well as the most recent article from the Washington Post about creative businesses in the Washington metropolitan area, great places to visit, and Artistic Artifacts was on that list too. Um, okay, so one more thing, a couple of, I pulled these out. This is actually in the beading book. You can see it in there, you can see some details. So um, this is a very early quilt. I did use, so you can see the beads on the end of the bugle beads, and then I attached the leaves and did some that. Um, this is a piece here that was hand dyed, and I again was trying to highlight the linen because I think that these old vintage linens really come alive with color. You can see more of the pattern and the work that they had, so that was an experiment there. And then this one here was a piece, it's my Joan of Arc. I was in Germany and had a, a post of the picture of this beautiful. Uh, statue that just reminded me of Joan of Arc. So this is um, bead stitching to keep this metal mesh the, in place. So I didn't want to glue it. I didn't want to fuse it. I just wanted it to stay in place. So that's that. Okay. So if you want to bead along with me, you have the list of the tools to get and to order. Um, and uh, we hope to see you next Saturday where we'll do a little bit more beading. Don't forget our third Thursday. We will be having a Facebook Live sale at 7 o'clock on Thursday. And I have some great surprises for you for that too. I am creating treasure boxes from my studio to yours with our um, using our Indian uh, paper boxes. So those will we'll have a mixed media box and we'll have a fiber box. So those will be, um, you want to, Come that night because we're going to do limited editions and when they're sold out they're sold out and um, look for our newsletter on Wednesdays Facebook live Instagram YouTube which this will be posted on YouTube so you can uh, share it and uh, show it to your friends go back and see it later and we will watch the comments to see if you have any additional questions thank you for joining us at artistic artifacts in Alexandria Virginia